Let us rejoice in the Lord and keep a festival in honour of all the saints. Let us join with the angels in joyful praise to the Son of God. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, as you can tell from those opening words, today is the Feast of All Saints. Hence, standing before the Reredos with all the many saints uh, depicted there. Tomorrow, of course, is All Souls Day uh, on, on, on Monday. And, of course, having a Mass here on Sunday means we can't have a Mass for all souls in the church. However, I will be keeping a Mass at home, as I do every day when we don't have Mass in church. I will keep that uh, as a requiem for all souls. Now, if any of you would like to pass names on for, to me that you'd like to be prayed for by name on the day, either telephone me, drop me an email, or if you see me, write the name on a bit of paper, pop it into my hand, and I promise you, uh, your loved ones will be remembered tomorrow at Mass very early in the morning. Let's pray uh, first with the Collect for All Saints Day. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the Book of the Revelation by St. John the Divine, from chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our, to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For, in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So now may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now in these days of pandemic, we regret the loss of much of our liberty. And we're all praying for better times to come when our freedom will be restored. St. John, the Divine's vision of heaven, recorded in the book of the Revelation, which prophesies just such a future freedom, might appear to be somewhat utopian, where suffering no longer exists and the heavenly host is freed from all the constraints and limitations of earthly life. For many, <laughs> that is just wishful thinking. Writing about the saints, St. John says that these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That our future should mean that we would hunger and thirst no more is St. John's promise to us through God's revelation to him. And such is every Christian's hope. Now in the Gospel, Jesus speaks of the contrasts between the earthly present and a heavenly future. The Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount remind us that we are blessed even when that may not appear to be the case. The poor may be materially impoverished, but they are blessed in the riches of Christ's love for them. Those mourning the loss of loved ones experience grief and pain unquestionably. But our promise the future comfort of the risen Christ who has shared our death and conquered its finality. <clears throat> the Beatitudes also tell us how to assist our journey to heaven by being attuned to the life of Christ, to be meek, merciful, pure in heart and peaceable. These are virtues all resonant with the earthly example and ministry revealed in the life of Jesus Christ. <laughs> there is one beatitude which is a stock-in-trade favourite with our Jehovah Witness friends. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. For the Jehovah Witnesses, this means that when they die, this earth will be their inheritance. But mind you, according to their interpretation of the book of the Revelation, only 144,000 of them will be so privileged. I must say, that doesn't sound much of a, a promising inheritance to me. This war-torn, melting planet is time-limited. If that is their legacy, then they will not have come through the, that great tribulation which St. John promises that the saints will so do. What St. John does promise us is a new heaven and a new earth. This new earth to which he refers is heaven. The new earth which the meek are promised as their inheritance. The eternal heavenly home which the Lord has won for the saints and not this planet earth with its time-limited lifespan. Where St. John tells us that there shall be no more hunger or thirst, we could add to that today that there shall be no more poverty, unemployment, modern slavery, or COVID virus, and so on. For we are told that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. It is into this hope that the saints are born. Now we can only speculate what our eternal life with them will be like in the resurrection. What we know is that it will not be an earthly community of 144,000 souls, as the Jehovah Witnesses would have us believe, but a heavenly family of saints, which St. John tells us is a great multitude that no one could number. And as the writer to the letter of the Hebrews also tells us, 
will be inestimable, saying, as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand of the seashore. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. That city is the new Jerusalem, which God has prepared for you and for me, which the saints now inhabit, of which Isaiah prophesies, saying, The Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Now, there are many people whose faith is not strong enough to get them to church, even once a week on a Sunday, and yet they expect that it will be enough to get them into heaven. With over 2,000 years of unbroken belief in an evidence-based witness to the existence of a community of saints in an eternal heaven, it is hard to understand why such a profound revealed promise defining our eternal future should be at best accepted for the lukewarm indifference and at worst left untested and even disregarded by many people. To those who haven't taken the time or made the effort to read the scriptures or are simply stubbornly resistant to any idea of investigating the truth of the Christian faith. All of this must seem like escapism, a fairy story, the vain hope of fanciful minds. For many folk, the earth and our existence upon it is all that we've got, and when it's gone, it's gone. But the evidence to the contrary is there for all to see, if we will but look. The witness to Christ's resurrection was testified to by over 500 people at the time of its occurrence. A Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah at his transfiguration, followed by his return after crucifixion and death to talk with his disciples, evidenced a life beyond this mortal one. And the assumption of Our Lady to a life in heaven to be with her son despite only being accepted by the church as doctrine in the 19th century, was nonetheless understood and believed by the early church that the mother of God had indeed ascended to a promised heavenly inheritance to be again in communion with her son. That this great celebration of the communion of saints should fall upon the day before the feast of all souls is surely a comfort and a consolation to all in time of mourning. Place our hope in the promise of both a heavenly destination for the departed and an eternal reunion with us, for us with our loved ones who have gone before us, allows us to glimpse the divine light which shines beyond the darkness of earthly death in the resurrection which triumphed over the crucifixion of the source of all life. This is why we can believe Jesus, who has already experienced our death and resurrection, when he tells us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He has been there with us and has gone to a place where we eventually will be with him. Now C.S. Lewis said, a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not a form of escapism or wishful thinking, but one of the things a Christian is meant to do. Heaven is our blessed hope, and it is the Christian's promised destiny. In the Lord's Prayer we say, Our Father, who art in heaven. These are words from God himself, given to us by Jesus Christ. Why would we doubt him? We are all on a pilgrimage, returning to our Heavenly Father. And if our Father is in heaven then that is where we are heading, a destination promised to us through the life, death, resurrection and ascension of the one who has gone before us to prepare a place for you and for me so that where he is, we may be also. That place where we will eternally be united with God and reunited with one another in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just remind you, please, uh, do phone me or email me or, or 
pop into my hand the names of those loved ones you wish to be prayed for early tomorrow morning. I will keep a requiem for all souls in uh, the vicarage. And let us pray. God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord be with you. And also with you. And now may the saints in heaven watch over you and bring you God's protection. May their prayers raise your intercessions before the throne of the heavenly Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.